Uh, this is uh, an hour dedicated to the United Way and its day of caring. And a fitting way to begin this hour is with uh, one of the most caring people I've ever met, and that's Lisa Henry. Lisa, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Formerly a corporate cutthroat attorney, now a union rebel rouser, but also on the softer side, Berkeley County Backpack Program. That's right. Yes, I've been a volunteer with the Backpack Program for 13 years now. You have a lot of different personalities, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> you got that. You got that corporate cutthroat attorney. You got the the tough union gal, and the soft-hearted backpack program. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the backpack program, in all seriousness, is uh, one of uh, the most uh, amazing things that happens in Berkeley County, among many. And this is a way that you feed hungry kids in school, sort of in an anonymous way. Too. You, you get the food into their backpacks, get it home so they can eat during the day, uh, and then uh, also on the weekends. That's right. There are a lot of kids in Berkeley County that are facing food insecurity at home. So many children depend on the meals they get at school. They get a breakfast, they get lunch, but we want to make sure that they're fed over the weekends as well. So we are an all-volunteer organization that started over 13 years ago that delivers bags of non-perishable food to the Berkeley County Schools for kids to take home every weekend. We also do larger bags over um, spring breaks and, and uh, winter break, Thanksgiving break, and then we also have a summer program as well. Do you have any volunteers who are helping the backpack program today during the Day of Caring? Yes, we do. I was trying to think, this might be our 12th year participating in Day of Caring. And so we usually have uh, our packing days on Thursdays, but we move it to Tuesdays for Day of Caring. So we have a group of volunteers that will be assembling at our facility shortly. And I want to mention we have a group from Hedgesville High School that will be coming to volunteer with us today. So that's always special to have Berkeley County students helping other Berkeley County students. Some of them may have been children who were helped by the backpack program themselves. It is a possibility, and we have had um, kids who have received the backpack program come back years later and volunteer with us and let us know how the food bags help them. How many um, on a, on a weekly basis? How many kids do you guys uh, do you guys serve in the county? So we provide about seven hundred bags a week. Um, every single week so that is um, a lot of coordination getting all the food to our facility and making sure it gets out to the to the school so we have a dedicated team who volunteers and make sure that gets done every week that is so cool i, I gotta say i hate the term the term food insecurity because it just makes it seem not as vital not as important these are people without food it's, it's scary it's just it's so scary and it's so sad that in this country we have kids who don't have enough food and it's so wonderful that that your organization is is there to 700 kids I mean that's I, I don't know how many kids we have in the school system in Berkeley County but that's a huge percentage 20,000 I mean that's that's an unbelievable I mean that's 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 so many kids that that need help it's just sad it it it, it bothers me. I, I just want to say that I, my business, Bodwell Insurance, I'm going to write a check for $250 to you guys. Oh, thank just, you. Appreciate um, that. I don't know how to, how to get it to you. Let me know when we get off the air, but I want to, She's I want to tell everybody that. right now. I mean, just, just helping kids. I mean, it's just, it, it just burns me up that they're kids without food in America. Yeah. Tell everybody how they can contribute. Please. Sure. Um, you can go to our website, feed bcwvkids.org or you can mail a check to our P.O. Box, which is 2153 in Hedgesville. And um, you what's can the, also... What's the zip on that? 25427. So it's P.O. Box. If you want to mail a check, and everyone everyone should mail a check, P.O. Box 2153, Hedgesville, 25427. It's just unbelievable. We have kids. We have kids in Berkeley County, which is what, the, the second wealthiest county in, the, in, in West Virginia, our per capita income is so high. It's sad that there has to be a program like this, but I'm so thankful that there is. Oh, well, thank you. And yes, there, there is a need. And it it is about food, but I think it's also showing the students that there is somebody in the community who cares about them. And I think that's something that makes Berkeley County special, that 
you know, we're not going to let those kids go hungry. And we have volunteers that make sure that happens each and every week. And if you're out there listening and you feel that you are struggling, making sure your bills are paid, getting enough food, especially with food prices that have gone up over the years, Mm -hmm. just reach out to your child's school or teacher and let them know you want to sign your child up for the weekend food bags. We don't have income restrictions. We do um, provide food bags for a lot of families that are in a gray zone that um, maybe a year before they were doing okay, but this year they're struggling because of could be medical issues, divorce. We have a lot of grandparents raising grandkids unexpectedly that um, reach out and receive the food bags. And it's just kind of a simple way to make sure kids are fed because if kids are not fed, they're struggling, they're stressed out when they're in school and they can't learn. And, And that's what it really comes down to. And there's so many more families now. I mean, with the the inflation, the way the price of food has gone up, there are so many more families now that may have been fine a year or two ago. And and quite frankly, if if you do have a a, a problem getting food for your children, don't uh, don't hesitate. Reach out to the school. Just let them know because it's it, the the help is there. We all go through periods of time in our lives where we need help. And thankfully that there are people there to help. There's no reason to be embarrassed by it. There's no reason to there's no reason to worry about it. I mean, just the most important thing is make sure your kids are fed and this this program does help that greatly. Thank you. Matt Miller. Is this a program, as you were just saying, it can kind of be a stopgap for a family that's in a tough situation. So you you may have a student that's on the backpack program for say half of the year, but not necessarily an entire year. Yes, we do okay. have um, some students and families come back year after year for mm-hmm. our help. They rely on it. And others, it is just a temporary thing, maybe for um, part of a year, or some just do over the summer when their kids are home okay. the whole time. And so we're av- available for temporary help as well. All right. Look back 13 years and think of when it all began till now. What kind of sticks in your mind what maybe even overwhelms you a little bit with where this program has come i think um you know 13 years ago we started at one school hedgesville elementary school and just trying to get enough um we were um buying food out of our own pockets um Mm -hmm. struggling each week to fill those bags and and now um that we are you know, a thriving, continuing nonprofit that is out in the community. And, you know, with that, we are, because of our volunteers, have been able to help so many kids over the years. And you have a place to store and, and as you said, pack and all of the things that you need. Yes, we're in um, Berkeley County Development Authority, um, is the landlord of, the owner of our building at Mm -hmm. 300 Foxcroft. We are in their basement there. um, and they give us a, a very discounted um, rent um, yeah. for our huge facility, which we need to be able to store right. and sort the food because um, we need to buy food in bulk um, to make sure we have enough each and every week. So Lisa, we're grateful to them as well. I don't mean to hustle you uh, yep. from your segment, but we've got to get to the next one. And I appreciate all the work that you do. Yeah. And again, how can people find out more about the backpack program? You can go to our website, um, just Google Berkeley County Backpack Program to find our website. And also we are on Facebook as well. And uh, we are having a golf tournament fundraiser on Monday the 25th, still looking for golfers. So you can find information on that as Facebook as well. Excellent. Great to see you again. It's great to see you. Thank you. And happy day of caring. To you as well. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Lisa Henry, our guest. And we're not going to commercial break, so you, if you want to stay, you can. But if you, need, okay. if you need to leave, you can just you know, get up and walk out. It's up to you. Do what Bodwell does. Come and go as you please. You know? hey, so, uh, well, I mean, height has its privileges. You know, and we're not talking about my height. I wouldn't know. You know I've, I've, I've never experienced that myself. Uh, our next guest, by the way, is uh, via telephone. And I want first I should thank uh, Heather Polnick for uh, setting all this up. She's done a great job of managing this hour for us to get the day of caring on the air here from Community Markets. Uh, Mark Pfeiffer. Mark, did I pronounce your last name correctly? Pfeiffer, that's right. It's German. You did great. You did great. Excellent. As far as I know, I don't have any German in the system, but I, I did used to watch <laughs> Hogan's Heroes, so that's helped me with my German. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Mark, tell me about Community Markets, Inc. I'm not, I don't think I'm very familiar with it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all for having me on. Uh, it's my first time actually talking to you guys. Hopefully this won't be the last, but Community Markets, Inc., uh, we're located in Charlestown, West Virginia. We're a nonprofit that's about two and a half years old. 
we exist to connect locally grown food to families in need, which um, pretty much we have a threefold mission. So we are um, feeding those who need it in the community, which there's many, um, and we're supporting our farmers. So uh, as I mentioned, we, we take any funding we receive, grants, donations, whatever, and we go to farms in the area. We prioritize West Virginia farmers, Berkeley, Jefferson County, et cetera. And um, we then, uh, with our funds, buy from those farmers, support the local economy, support our farmers who definitely, you know, always, always need the help. And um, and then we take that food and we we make it available to families who might not otherwise have that access. Um, so we're increasing food security. We're serving our farmers, and we are feeding people who who need access to healthy, fresh, farm-raised food. Excellent. I have a garden uh, the side of my house, and the peppers and tomatoes are coming in like crazy right now. They taste so much better yeah. right out of the ground than they do when you have to wait a few days to get them at a store. So love the work Absolutely. that you're doing there. How, how are the United Way volunteers helping you today? Oh, they're doing great. So uh, uh, they're from Jefferson Security Bank, so I'm grateful for, for them to come out there. They're helping us at our food box giveaway, which is a program that actually has been around for a year. So today is kind of our, our one-year celebratory food box giveaway. So um, we had to get all the boxes set up, and then all the food came in yesterday and uh, in the past couple of days from nearby farms. And we do have some fr donated from grocery stores, canned and box goods. So all the food needs to get sorted into the boxes to make sure that um, you know each recipient, each family – receives about the same amount of food and um that runs from about seven to ten and then at ten we already have a bunch of cars lining up here in, our, in the parking lot we're going to start distributing the food out to people so um they'll just pull up their car to us we'll load in a box full of about 30 to 40 pounds of food mostly from local farms and then uh we also have a bag of corn that will go that didn't fit in the box that will also uh, go with them today Matt Miller. Uh, tell us a little bit, Mark, about how this all began. Um, d d was it just a matter of seeing a need within the community and then figuring, hey, how can we meet that need? Yeah, so our, our board president and founding board members um, own their own company, and they're kind of entrepreneurs in their own right. But they also, yes, they saw the need in the community um, both to serve our farmers, to help um, – our area, our region, the tri-state area, grow its own food and be able to feed itself, especially those most in need. So two and a half years ago, they founded um, the nonprofit, and then I, I know some of the board members, and they knew my nonprofit background, never in a, kind of a manager, managerial, if you will, position that I am now, but um, I, I kind of have been around with uh, different nonprofits. I, I got started with a um, – AmeriCorps term of service about 10 years ago with a Habitat for Humanity affiliate in uh, in West Virginia here, kind of down south a little bit. Um, so, yeah, we're helping fill a need. We're helping uh, be a force multiplier of the good work that's already happening. I know many individuals and organizations, some of which you, you've already talked to today, are doing great food security work in the area. Um, we're just trying to bring the angle of serving our local farmers in the process and buying from them. Um, but we want to be a force multiplier to what's already happening and help maybe fill in some of the gaps of where um, either our farmers aren't being served or um, individuals might not be receiving you know, the aid they need because there's so much need. There's a lot of food already going out from organizations, like I said, but we can always be doing more. So we're just trying, here to try, to try to help where we can. Uh, again, uh, Mark, if you could tell us uh, how our listeners can be served by community markets and how they can get in touch with you for more information today on this day of caring. Yeah, so you can visit our website, communitymarketsinc.org, and um, there's information on there about uh, we need to um, post the upcoming food box giveaways. We do about um, four to six of these a year, though there will be an uptick with some funding we receive from Unicare. Um and you can always also find us on Facebook. Just search Community Markets, Inc. Uh, we're always looking for those wishing to, to donate. We're always looking for food. Um, we're currently fundraising to buy our own refrigerated trailer so that we can uh, transport food directly from farms to food deserts and low-income neighborhoods. Um, so there's, always, there's a place to donate online. But uh, if you're looking for food, uh, please go to our Facebook page. There's, there's information there. Go to our website, communitymarketsinc.org. 
And uh, anyone interested in helping feed those who need it with, with food from local farms, we'd love to be in touch. Mark, thanks so much for your time this morning and the great work that you do. Thanks. Keep up. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye. Mark Piper, Program Manager for Community Markets. Uh, in studio in our next segment, Lisa Bivens from Panhandle Home Health. Lisa, come a little closer to your microphone and say good morning to everybody. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> How are you feeling? Pretty good. Pretty good today. How about you? Good. How's your daughter? She's still dancing? <laughs> she is doing more choreography now, but mm-hmm. still working and, uh, yeah, living the dream. Goodness yeah. gracious. How old is she? She just turned 34 yesterday. 34? Wow. Yes. I can't believe it. She still looks 12 to me. My goodness. <laughs> 34? Yeah. yeah. I remember when she had just gotten out of high school and I guess it was, she had gotten a high-profile dancing job for a major artist, if yeah. I remember going on tour. Yeah, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, that's uh-huh. right. Wow. It's been that wow. long since then. Wow. My goodness. Yeah, she's had a nice run. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah. Well, good nice for you. Yeah. Uh, what do you do with Panetta Home Health today on this day of caring? Oh, well, um, as a lot of people probably know, since I've been in this community since I was born, um, I'm the executive director there at Panhandle Home Health, and uh, we are really enjoying having some volunteers at our office today. They're helping us to reorganize our medical supply room mm-hmm. and clean it out and get it in a, in a in a more efficient way for our clinicians, our clinical team to help find the supplies that they need to take to our patients. So it's been something we've been wanting to do for quite some time. And we have some great volunteers from Hospice of the Panhandle uh, coming to help us today. And, and they're a good partner with us all, all the way around. We work together with many patients out in the community. So it's great to have them there in this volunteer capacity today to get us all situated with our medical supplies. And then uh, tell me how the community uh, works with Panhandle Home Health what the the service specifically that you provide and how they find out about your services if they need them. Sure. Uh, We provide medically directed home health services to people in Berkeley, Jefferson, and Morgan counties. Um, And basically what that means is that a physician would have to order those services. Mm -hmm. Um, And it can be anywhere from wound care to IV therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, um, medical social services, occupational therapy. We have a registered dietitian that provides nutritional counseling and certified home health aides. And I think I neglected to mention the registered nurses uh, that we have that go out in the community. John, I'm going to guess some of your Medicare policyholders intersect with what Lisa does. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Panhandle Home Health does uh, does a lot of super work here in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, and a lot of times that uh, people who are on Medicare. They're the biggest consumers of home health. Mm-hmm. I mean, they tend to, as we, as we get older, things break down. Right. And it's good to have a, have a partner in the community like Panhandle Home Health to, to support these seniors who need, I mean, who, who, need, who need home health right. badly. Yeah. Well, and especially since, you know, we've seen so many changes in the healthcare landscape, um, you know, with the pandemic and things, I, I don't like always bringing that up, but it's definitely something to be considered where a lot of individuals or patients don't want to go into a facility. Mm-hmm. They want to recover at home. And so, and that's really where they're better off. Um, they're not exposed to a lot of, of germs and things like that in their home. And just mentally, psychologically, they do better mm-hmm. healing at home. So we're happy to be a part of that process. Well, there are so many, I mean, so many people go to a, a hospital for one thing and, and end up with, you know, 12 other things. Absolutely. Especially when you when you are recovering from something, your immune system's already down, you're already having problems, and to have the option of being cared for at home really creates better outcomes. Right. It's really interesting, you know, when you say that about the outcomes, um, because they, right now, well, several years ago, um, you know, Medicare decided that any joint replacements were not a qualifying stay at a hospital. And so those patients are being taken care of with total joint replacements on an outpatient basis. Mm. And so the really cool thing that we've been able to do is visit those patients prior to the services starting, getting them prepared for that for that surgery and knowing what to expect when they get home, already learning how to get in and out of the car. And they go home the same day of surgery and our therapist meets them at the door. Um, and so it's a really cool Cool program and uh, we typically those patients can progress and do very well and go to outpatient setting within two weeks oh it's it's amazing yes. yeah I mean a, a, a knee replacement is an outpatient surgery mm-hmm. and hip and hip yeah and hip <laughs> is yeah. a heck of a lot my yes. son had a hip replacement uh, within the last year same day you're in and out same yeah. day it's amazing mm-hmm. that used to be like a week stay in the hospital it's the truth right? yeah mm-hmm. yeah and now you're out moving around the same day it's crazy yeah we have a great we have great physical therapy team 
Oh, that does such a good job with those those total joint replacements. And of course, they need some nurse, nursing services as well sometimes. But the majority of that is, is our physical therapy team, and they just do a fantastic job. Matt, when you offer these services, how much is it long term as opposed to short term, or do you kind of do both? Typically, it's a short term okay. stay. Um, now, there are patients, if they qualify, we can see them, you know, for for years. Uh, okay. That's not the norm. Typically, okay. it's, uh, you know, our job is to get people independent and back to their prior level of function. So, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, enter into the home to do a lot of education to a caregiver or to the patient if they've had some kind of a life changing mm -hmm. illness or something like that, that they need to understand how to manage. And th that's really our goal. You know, the, you, you teach a man to fish, feed him for a mm -hmm. lifetime. That's kind of our, our motto. So, um, yeah, mostly a short term stay to get them back to their level right. of independence and that could be anywhere from several days in a row to once a week for a period of time oh yes yes right. uh, when we can see typically the uh, the stay within our organization is between 45 and 60 days it mm -hmm. can sometimes be less than that as I mentioned the total joints you know some of these you know some healthy people that are just recovering from a surgery uh, we might only need to see for a couple of weeks um, mm -hmm. but you know our goal is to keep people at home, out of the hospital, out of the emergency room, you know, and a lot of that involves, you know, medication review, mm -hmm. making sure that their medicines, they're being yeah. taken properly. Um, you'd be surprised at how many people um, will go to the hospital for a problem and all their medications change. And so the doctor changes them, they get them stable. And the patient may go back home or they may go to a skilled nursing facility for a period of time. Medic mm -hmm. Medications change again. And then when patients go back home, they really are unsure what they're right. supposed to be taking. And so it requires a lot of coordination on the part of, of our clinical team to, mm -hmm. to figure that out and iron that out. Um, because a lot of times the patient will come back home and start back on the medicines that they were on before the hospitalization. Mm -hmm. and, which is probably what put them in the hospital to begin with. So, so it's kind of a, um, a real coordinated effort there to just, you know, make sure patients really understand what it is, you know, that they're supposed to be taking medication wise. That just happens to be a really big reason for going back to the hospital or to the emergency room. So, well, and the insurance companies love it because it costs them a lot less money than keeping people in a hospital bed. Absolutely. And keeping them from going back. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Better outcomes. Mm -hmm. Better yeah. outcomes. Lisa, we are just about out of time. How can people find out more about Panhandle Home Health? They can visit, visit us on our website at panhandlehomehealth.org, or they can call our office at 304-263-5680. Good to see you again. Love being here. Thanks, mm -hmm. guys. Happy Day of Caring to you. Thank you. 933 on the United Way's Day of Caring. And uh, Heather Polinick set this whole hour up for us. Thank you so much, Heather. Great job. And in studio with me, the Hall of Fame of Matt Miller and the tallest coast we've ever had, John DeBaugh, John Bodla. Yes, sir. Uh, standing tall and proud on this day of caring. We're meeting a lot of fun people who are doing a lot of good works in our community. We have got a uh, big hitter coming on the program right now, Penny Porter. She is the one who's running the United Way these days in the Eastern Panhandle. Penny, good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for for having us on today and and hosting this this for us today and, and uh, highlighting all of the good work that's going on on our day of caring. Penny, uh, nationally across the country, uh, does the United Way do the United Way branches get as much support as you get here in the Eastern Panhandle from volunteers? Well, um, I. I would think that the majority of them have great volunteer support in the, their local communities. I, I do think, um, you know, I'm, I um, believe our Eastern Panhandle is extremely generous uh, with giving of themselves uh, to our, our local Eastern Panhandle and just very, very grateful for that um, and, and all the multiple ways that they give of themselves. How many volunteers are fanning out across the Eastern Panhandle today to provide services? Well, we have given out of about 950 shirts. <laughs> so now that includes volunteers and our agency hosts. Uh, so 
our last estimate here, because it does change literally um, by the minute as we get close to day of carry, and even today we've had volunteers, um, you know, just just arriving at some sites. But we um, we know we have about probably between 650 and 700 volunteers um, across Berkeley, Morgan, and Jefferson. And how many different projects are they working on today? So we have a variety of projects. I would um, I believe we're at about. 35 uh, different sites, but there are multiple projects going on um, at some of those locations. For instance, Horses with Hearts has multiple things. They have over 120 volunteers just at their site. Uh, wow. So there are some large um, you know, activities going on. A lot of our students are engaged this year. We have um, lots of students over in Jefferson County actively involved and Berkeley, we've had uh, three of uh, the four local um, uh, county high schools here uh, gathering food for the last several weeks uh, for our mega food drive. And then a couple of those schools are actually out and about today at different locations. And over in Morgan County, students are out there as well. Um, I know there's a, a food drive going on as well at Food Lion today uh, over in Berkeley Springs. And students are painting over in Paw Paw. So we've got activities going on, I like to say, from Paw Paw to Charlestown. So, so you got, you got mucking in Martinsburg and banning in Paw Paw. <laughs> there we go, yes. That could be their new tagline, Rob. Hey, Penny, it's Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I am doing well. I know you are, too. You're always smiling, always having fun. United Absolutely. Way, United Way just does such great work through our community. Are you finding that... Now that we are, are the the pandemic is really in the rearview mirror. That you guys are are getting back up as far as volunteers and everything else. You're getting back up to pre-pandemic, if not way past pre-pandemic levels of the amount of help you're able to give in the community. Well, this year is definitely a higher number for us, um, the highest we've had since the pandemic began, uh, as far as the number of volunteers for Day of Caring, and also the number of agencies who are kind of comfortable hosting um, for the day as well, because, you know, it was, um, you know, sensitive there for both sides of that, you know, the agency hosts and, and also the volunteers. So we are definitely seeing an increase. And I think a lot of our agencies are seeing some of their volunteer base come back. Now, whether it's to the level, I don't think we're quite there of what what it was pre-pandemic in, in many ways um, because we've had to kind of regrow some of those um, donor the, the volunteer bases for some that really rely on those and um, you know meals on wheels is one that, that comes to mind instantly because they were were really hard hit during the pandemic for their volunteer base but but they have actively as, as others have you know tried to regrow that and so I think we are definitely seeing great strides in getting back up to, to where we were um, but the the needs are also very different and also growing. So really, um, we just continue to need the, that, that support in the community. Uh, yes. The uh, Meals on Wheels, they, they do all that out of uh, King's Daughter's Court still, I believe. For the Berkeley County for one, Berkeley, yes. I, yes. that is just. And then, of course, we've got Jefferson County too. Right, right. I just, um, I want to give a shout out to King's Daughters for for providing that space and and really helping. What what a great way since they have since everybody knows or most people know it used to be a hospital and to be able to use that that hospital kitchen and all that stuff to to stage and get everything done really uh, really helps Meals on Wheels be successful. We have just a, such a generous community uh, that, that provides, you know, in so many ways, whether it is space for a nonprofit or financial support and contributions, uh, the volunteerism, uh, we, we really do have, you know, a great community there. And, and I want to, you know, I wish I could, could actually name all of the, the organizations represented today at the different locations and, and who's providing volunteers. Of course, I would run out of time today but if I tried to do that. But I do want to highlight and mention our sponsor for Day of Caring, which is uh, City. Um, and they are uh, kind of featured on the back of our shirt. So you'll see those out in the community a little bit. But uh, they've been very generous to, to come back for their second year as our sponsor. So um, a huge thanks to them. Well, they're, they're such a great community partner to so many organizations. They, they really understand what being a community bank and a community partner is all about. They get out there in the community. They help. They support. What a, what a great company. 
Well, and actually, this is uh, formerly City Group, so a different city. But but I would agree with you. City National Bank is also extremely supportive. Um, they uh, support United Way in numerous ways. Um, but but uh, our sponsor is actually City, formerly known as City Group, um, that, that came on board there with our sponsorship. Oh. So. Um, yes, uh, lots, lots of companies, lots of businesses represented, uh, other organizations, and something really cool that happens, you know, frequently with us are, are, are nonprofits volunteering to help each other. So we've got, you know, a group from hospice helping at the senior center and over at Panhandle Home Health, and we have Telemon that's, that's helping at Norborn uh, Daycare Center. So, like, they are actively supporting each other, which is another really cool thing. Penny, Penny first, good save, by the way. Well done. And uh, <laughs> secondly, good appearance today. Anything else you want to make sure you get across to our listeners before we move on to our next guest on this day of caring? Oh, I just, um, you know, a big thank you to everybody. Thanks to, to each of you for, for uh, helping us share the stories and spreading the message about our, the work today. And and each and every one of our volunteers and project hosts, uh, we appreciate them so much. And we are looking forward to a beautiful 29th annual day of caring today. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Penny All right. Bye-bye. Penny Porter, CEO of the United Way of the Eastern Panhandle. You know, in hockey, they give the Vezina Trophy to the goalie, the best goalie in the league, makes the best, most saves, mm-hmm. right? Penny, that, that was a good one. Vezina quality save right there. <laughs> uh, our guest uh, in this next segment is from the Potomac Val- uh, Valley Audubon Society, Associate Director of Conserva- uh, Conservation and Operations, Caitlin K.C. Walters. Caitlin, good morning to you. Thanks so much for being with us today on this day of caring. You're on with Rob, Matt, and Jonathan. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I've got a very good friend who's a birder. Okay. Fan of Larry Bird? No, not the <laughs> Big Bird of Sesame Street. No, uh, she is the she and her group. They go out and they spot birds in uh, Frederick County, Maryland, and they they oh, each year they okay. did migration patterns and population of the species and that sort of thing. And I know you guys teach birding one hundred and one courses at the Potomac Valley Audubon Society. Yes, we do. We've been doing it for over thirty years. Casey, can you tell us the uh, entire, you know, your mission at the Potomac Valley Audubon Society and what you're doing for the Day of Caring? Sure. Our mission is to preserve, restore, and enjoy the natural world through education and action. Um, Today, for the Day of Caring, this is who we've been doing the United Way Day of Caring for over 20 years now. Um, I rotate between our four nature preserves kind of each year. I used to do it at all of them at once, and that was a little crazy. <laughs> um, so now I rotate, and we are out here at Cool Spring Preserve today, and we are working on some low-income AmeriCorps housing, getting it all set up um, for for some AmeriCorps, which are uh, domestic Peace Corps um, service members um, that, that served their community for a year term, and we want to have a nice place to offer them to stay. Your other three locations, you have two in Berkeley, one in Jefferson, and one in in, uh, in Morgan. Uh, is it pronounced Yankower? Yes. Okay, and then is it Eidolon? Eidolon. Yes. Eidolon, then Stouffer's Marsh. Stouffer's Marsh. Stouffer's Marsh. Marsh. Oh, one for three, Rob. Not bad. <laughs> hey, that gets you in the Hall of Fame in three, baseball. 333 yeah. batting average, baby. Hey, I, my, uh, when, when Ellen was running the place out there, my kids went to camp there for years at Yankower, and one of my sons was uh, – was a junior counselor and then actually was a counselor out there for a while. What an amazing organization you guys have. The way he learned oh, so you. much. My kids had so much fun. We love those stories. We love that we have former campers coming back to be junior counselors and then counselors. And then some of them even sign up for that whole year AmeriCorps service with us. And, and we love that we've been doing this for, for that long, that we have um, folks that we can now you know, brag about that have literally grown up through our programs. We love that. My my son, it was one of the greatest uh, greatest parts of his growing up. He he loved it. It's his favorite. Yank is, is my son Hunter Bod was his um his his favorite place in the world is Yankower. He comes back. He came back into town. He had a had a had a girlfriend. He's seeing. He brought her. He's like, I got to take her to Yankower. We've got to hike the trails. I've got to show her the place. Very exciting. Oh my, love that. Matt that Miller. is wonderful. Caitlin, besides the camps, tell us more about the programs that you offer to the public. Sure. So we do a variety of youth and adult and family programming. We, we have a little something for everybody. 
Um, we did start out as the small birding club, but we've since grown into a really well-rounded environmental education organization. Um, we want you to love the birds, the bees, and the trees. Um, and so in addition to summer camp, we have um, uh, watershed education, which is for fourth graders. So we actually go into the schools and teach them about how uh, um, out here in the eastern Panhandle, West Virginia, we're still connected to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, we also do homeschool programs. So we actually have that going on today too, you know, just to keep things exciting here at Cool Spring. We have um, five kids out for outdoor school. So um, they are outside all day today engaging in nature. Um, and then we have We Naturalists, which are a little preschool group, and they'll be here next week. Um, and then, of course, the adult programming. We have a ton of free adult programming. Um, from Birding 101 to workshops. We have a fall foraging workshop next week. Um, there's just, it's a never ending list. We just had our plant sale over the weekend. We do a ton of stuff. How do we find out more information to be involved in those programs? Go on our website and sign up for our e newsletter. It comes out twice a month. It's called Heads Up, and you'll get a blast of everything we're up to. Um, and then also just check our website calendar regularly and come and join us. And for the record, I could have pronounced Cool Spring correctly, but she had already taken that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could have gotten to 50%. I could have got the 50%. <laughs> Shaq's free throw percentage. I would have made it. I would have made it. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Uh, how did you get attracted to this field, Casey? Um, growing up, I always wanted to be a park ranger since I visited my very first national park um, as a kid. I was like, this is it. This is where I want to be. Um, always loved science. And um, coming out of high school, I thought I wanted to be a doctor because that seemed like what they pushed all kids interested in science to do. And there's nothing wrong with doctors. But uh, when I realized that I could actually make a career outside, <laughs> I was like, whoa. Um, so that's, that's what I wanted to do. And that's, that's what I pursued. And um, when this position came available six years ago, I was all about it. Well, Caitlin, from now on, we're just going to call you the nature doctor. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. Hey, any final thoughts for our audience? Anything else that uh, you can uh, tell them about the Potomac Valley Audubon Society on this day of caring? Uh, just thank you to the United Way for continuing to hold this volunteer work day every year. Um, love. I mean, it's the biggest it's the biggest one we have. Um, so without the United Way, this wouldn't be possible. And thank you to um, our sponsors, Sunny Meadows Garden Center donated mulch for us today, and to um, on-site inspection services, who's out leading my demo crew right now. Um, yep, those, those, those are our big people to thank today. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for calling in today, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you so much. All right. The Nature Doctor, Caitlin Casey Walters there from the Potomac Valley Audubon Society. As we uh, continue to move along on our uh, day of caring here for the September the 12th, Cindy Smalley is scheduled to be our next call-in. She's not yet uh, quite dialed the number, but uh, big thanks to the United Way and all the work that they do around our area. And to the many volunteers in the Eastern Panhandle who every year at this time uh, show up and donate their time and services and do so many things, not just on this day, but uh, all throughout the course of the year. Matt, and I know you do a lot of work with the rescue mission, and uh, you and your wife do, and a lot of other things in our community, too. One of the things you hear from everybody that comes into this program that is in a nonprofit in our eastern panhandle talks about the community and the volunteers and the willingness for those within our community to be involved. And uh, it's just an awesome thing. I think it makes, you know, this eastern panhandle uh, such a great place to live. 100%. I know you feel the same way, John. I agree. I mean, we, we live in an amazing community where we have so much going on and we have so many people that, that jump in to help others. And that's, that's what community is. Cindy Smalley is the Day of Caring Morgan County Coordinator. Cindy, good morning to you. You're on with Rob and Matt and Jonathan. Good morning. Are you the same Cindy Smalley we talk to each year regarding the Day of Caring in Morgan County? Uh, yeah, I've been doing this for oh, five or six years. And you are one of our favorite callers, Cindy. You have a great sense <laughs> well, of humor. Thanks. You're welcome. I look forward to talking to you every year. Uh, Cindy, uh, can you tell us what's going on in Morgan County today? 
Well, we have about 135 folks out this year, and it's about the same amount that we had last year, so that's pretty exciting. Um, but we do have some new projects. So the Morgan County Master Gardener Group is partnering with the fifth grade at Pleasant View Elementary School. They have a butterfly garden that was in desperate need of renovating, and so that's what they're doing this morning. Um, of course, we have the Mega Food Drive. Our National Honor Society kids are doing that. Um, the Morgan County Partnership is working at our North Berkeley Park, doing some upgrades and spreading some mulch around underneath all the playground equipment and doing some tree planting, I think they told me. Let's see what else is on my list. So pop off schools, some of our high school kids are upgrading. Um, they're like front porch, needed painted and trimmed, so doing some beautification work at their school. Um, the Warm Springs Watershed Group and the FFA members are working at our Greenway Cemetery. I haven't been there yet to take them lunch, so I don't know exactly what they're doing out there. Um, you know, you don't really, group we have this. I was going to say, ahead. Cindy, you don't hear that sentence strung together too often. They're in the cemetery. I'm going to bring them lunch. You don't hear that every day, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they're standing and working. You know, you do have to take care of the upkeep of a, of a cemetery. So. <laughs> Indeed. Just, I just don't hear that sentence every day. That's why I love having That's you. That's right. Yeah. There we go. Um, um, I have a, a, a new group. Um, the National Honor Society of Dance Students are working with our Ice House folks doing some work there. And another new group that we have is Wind Dance Farm, which is an nonprofit educational group that we have here in the county and they're doing um, a project there at their facility with some of their high schoolers as well so pretty excited that I've got kids involved today um, in my office the Berkeley Springs High School Book Club is putting together some stem kits for me for my clover buds in the 4-H program our kindergarten to second graders are called clover buds and this will give them some uh, the leader some activities to do that with a book and a science activity and so they're putting all the supplies counting out all the paper clips and putting those in bags for me and then um the boy scouts are going to be out at the Capen state park tonight helping clean up the trash and the very last group that i have is um some folks at valley health uh, are providing lunch for all of my volunteers so they're packing the lunches and um, that's their day of caring project that supports everybody here that's great our producer dylan bishop is a morgan county um product he went to berkeley springs high school and oh, okay i like him he's a good guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, he's that's good. good he's a good dude uh, mr bodwell well it sounds like you guys have a lot going on up there uh in morgan county um and you actually i mean morgan county is growing it's building uh, i was just i was in downtown berkeley springs i don't know three four weeks ago and wow you guys do a great job of just keeping that keeping that area looking nice i mean it's clean it's nice it's very very welcoming what is well, out of, out of, out of the it on. well yeah I, I appreciate that and let me ask out of these projects what is what is the newest project that you guys are working on this year something you guys haven't done before um, that we've never done before. Um, I guess that would be the partnership with Wind Dance Farm. We've, um, um, I've worked with them, but not as part of the Day of Caring organization. What is the Wind Dance They're, Farm? It's an educational organization. They have a facility where they bring in kids. They have summer programming. They do some homeschool programming um, through the year. And um, they're very much oriented to the environment. They're they're putting in a stream access for the preschoolers that come out to their program. Very cool. What time did your morning start? Because I noticed you said some of the Boy Scouts won't be doing their activities until maybe later this evening. I, I, this is a, a little overtime day for you. <laughs> Uh, well, I actually have a really lovely volunteer who is going to take care <laughs> of making sure that the Boy Scouts get their shirts and their, um, they're getting their lunches for supper this evening. So I, I'm not going to have to run that far. But you know, our day started at normal time. We used to do a big breakfast here, and COVID kind of put a, a hold on that, and it, it, we just haven't tried to pull that back together. So um, it, it just started as a normal day for me today. Are you seeing the volunteers returning the projects and so forth you just mentioned since COVID? Are you kind of back to where you were or even grown a little bit uh, since COVID? Um, since COVID, it's, it, it's about the same as it was last year. It's a, it's a little less than what we had before COVID, 
but that could also have to be with my crazy work schedule and how much time I have to go out and recruit volunteers. Mm -hmm. Cindy Smalley is with us, the Day of Caring Morgan County Coordinator. Cindy, a final thought about what's going on in Morgan County today. I'm just so excited that we're back out and we're doing good stuff for our community and that we're able to to support our, our high schoolers, getting them involved in doing community service and supporting our schools with that the cool project that they're doing down at Pleasant View to renovate their butterfly garden. So I, I'm just excited to have folks out and serving their community. Very nice. Thanks so much for calling in. We always look forward to talking with you this time of year. All righty. Thanks so much. Cindy Smalley, the Day of Care Coordinator in Morgan County, as we take our uh, final commercial break. Uh, thanks to Heather Plenick, too, for setting this all up with the United Way of the Eastern Panhandle and all of our guests who were in the studio or called in today and to Dylan Bishop for getting photos up in a timely fashion that Heather sent in to make sure everything was coordinated time-wise.